Hi, I'm Sebastian from Profile Prog, and I'm, well, I'm glad to, to welcome you, Andy Tillison from The Tangent. Uh, Hi. First of all, how are you doing? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. Um, the weather is um, pretty grim here at the moment. Uh, that's why I'm sitting in a, a room that's lit to make me feel warm, uh, warmer than it really is. But uh, yeah, I'm okay, thank you. I'm very well. Uh, First question, how did you form the band The Tangent? I wanted to, to know. Um, 20 well, years ago, a, I think. It's 20 years ago now, yes, um, uh, which is uh, quite a long time. So uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's quite difficult to remember how it all happened. But uh, it was uh, I was working on um, my, my other band, Parallel 90 Degrees, at, at the time. And I... Uh, just started doing something that was a bit more traditional prog and I kind of thought no this isn't for PO90 this is for something else and a friend of mine um, heard the something else and thought I know somebody who could do something with this and he passed it over to Reiner Stolt and uh, Reiner Stolt got Jonas and Uh, Zoltan involved in making our first record. I happened to know David Jackson, so I asked him to be involved in it. And we made this record, which was just supposed to be one record ever. <laughs> um, but uh, it did very well. And there was, um, you know, a lot of demand for a second album. And then we just kind of thought, well, this is this is my career. That's what I thought. You know, I thought this is what I do, I'll carry on doing it. And, uh, and that's, where we've, that's where we've ended up, if you know what I mean, yeah? If you had to review all these years, which words would, would you use to sum up your, your career, those 20 years of music, of albums, of gigs? The, the answer is simple. It's just been an adventure. Um, I've... Uh, You know, uh, I had no idea uh, where we were going and we've had to literally make it up as we go along. There was no plan. Like I say, we were going to make one record and we've now made 12 and we've been going for 20 years. So it's just been a case of, you know, thinking, what can we do next? What can we do next? And learning stuff and bringing new people in, meeting new people, writing new music making new uh, new fans and uh, and changing as we've gone along it's been quite an adventure and that's uh, that's the best way i can think of describing it um i've been listening to the tangent for many years and what what is uh, in my mind is is that you seem to do not care about format you have no boundaries in your music no format, no boundaries. You're very free in your I, music. What do you think? I, I think that's a, that's a very important point of, of what we are. Um, we, we make decisions about what sounds good, about what we want to do. But we don't make our decisions based on will this sell, how many... How many likes will we get on Facebook? Will this do this? Da, da, da. We've, we've never taken any notice of that at all. We just go for the music that came, um, that comes out of here. I mean, like when I asked Reiner what, uh, you know, Reiner stopped right back at the beginning um, of what I should do next. And he just said, follow your heart. And That's all I've done ever since. Um, so, you know, uh, when we were looking for a guitarist in 2010, instead of choosing somebody who I knew, who was my age, who was already into Prague and all that kind of stuff, I chose somebody who was half my age, less than half my age. He was only he was only 19 year old when I first met him, and you know, and I was in my 50s. So, you know, that was a big a big move, you know, and it brought a whole new dimension of things that I could learn from him um, about the music he was listening to. And, 
No, we, we don't have the boundaries. And if we want to be funky, we will. If we want to be metal, we will. If we want to do dance music, we will. Uh, but we will always continue to make progressive rock music mm. out of these different things because that was the whole point about progressive rock music when it first started, is it was music that was made out of so many different things that came together, classical music, jazz music, rock and roll, pop music. All these came together in prog. But 50 years later, you, we make prog by taking things that are around us now, and classical music and jazz music, but we've also got 90s trance dance music in it. We, we've got New Soul in it, Tamla Motown, all these kinds of things. We just jam them together. And a lot of people will say, well, you know, that's commercial suicide. And we say, yes. <laughs> we don't, that's us. Commercial suicide. We just commit it every day. So. You play like a kid making the music you just want to do. That's, that's all we've ever done, you know. That's all we've ever done. And, uh, you know, we don't, we don't think there and go, well, what do we need to do? And our record company leave us entirely alone and they just, um, they just let us get on with what we want to do. And, um, and that's, that's perfect for us, yeah. You can be free, but structure, structure is very important in music. What do you think? Totally, yeah. I mean, um, I, uh, I'm very, I'm very aware of kind of songwriting techniques and balance. Um, in that, like, it's you know, like a science. Yeah, back in the 1970s, I was in a kind of uh, power pop band just after the punk rock explosion, and uh, and the, the lead singer of that used to write all the songs for that band. It was his band. And I was trying to learn how to write my own songs. And he, he took me through the guts of it. And he, he said, it doesn't matter if you want to write a, a punk rock song or you want to write a number one chart hit or if you want to write a prog rock epic. The song needs to work in a certain formula. And all you need to do is embrace the formula And then you can do anything you want on top of it. You can change it completely as long as you started off with that. And, and so the idea for me of, yeah, I'm still writing pop songs. Even when I'm writing a long song, I'm kind of, I'm thinking, okay, at the guts of it, right at the, at the bottom, there's a, an introduction, a verse, a chorus, a verse, a chorus, a middle eight, and perhaps a couple of choruses to end. And, You know, it, this is like a, it's like a sonata format or it's like a sonnet format in poetry. It's, it's a way of standardizing that we, we know people like and can recognize. But you can develop on it as much as you want. You can, you know, you can go off into some kind of crazy jazz fusion and everything. But at the same time, you can make it all relate to the rest of the music that you've been playing. You can add themes and uh, and You know, I always want to take the, the listener on a musical journey with me. But, you know, I always like to, to make the journey feel like you're going somewhere. Um, and you're not just, uh, you're not just lost, if you know what I mean. You, you know where you're going. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. I, I, I think that's, I, I, I do follow rules. But I break them. And that's, <laughs> that's correct. But, but this is the most important thing about, about learning rules. Rules are there to be made, made to be broken. But if you don't learn the rules, how can you break them and enjoy it? <laughs> and you can't play the game. Yeah, that's it. You want to enjoy breaking those rules. So learn the rules and then you can break them. That's it. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Um, and do you write music every day? Uh, not every day, no. Um, but I do an awful lot of writing, and you know, writing doesn't necessarily mean sitting here with the instruments or anything. Writing can be whilst I'm on a walk and just thinking about stuff. I mean, a lot of a lot of my songs come from um, a kind of mental idea, a, a lyrical idea that's in my head, something I want to make music about. And, 
just things come into my head, little lines go through my mind, and I hear a little melody and think, yeah, 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 that's going to work with this and this, going like that. And then, of course, then I have my studio time where I try to get those ideas and put them down, you know. But uh, so writing is mm. writing isn't black and white, you know. Some so, sometimes the most important parts are, are miles away from a studio. They're, they're me sitting on a bench looking down a valley, or, um, or 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 just walking in the countryside, or on a car journey. Um, I'll be kind of putting the ideas together and the bit in the studio is just gluing it together. It's like the architect designs the building and somebody builds it. Well, I designed the building whilst I'm away from here and then I come here and build it. So that, that's it. And listening to the song from the hard shoulder, we, we could imagine several bands in it. <laughs> How can you explain that? It sounds like several different bands. Yes, yes. Well, I think that, I mean, the thing is, is that... So different songs, so different styles, so different music. We could imagine several bands in it. Well, that's it. That's just us breaking rules, isn't it? <laughs> Once again. Uh, you know, the, the, the thing is, is that, um, you know... Uh, It, it, we, we don't want to just be tied to always making the same record. I mean, we've made 12 um, and, you know, each time we do another one now, we have to kind of make it a reason for, for making a record. I mean, you know, when you get to artists' 12th albums, I've, I've looked around at lots of 12th albums. I was... I was quite interested to see who who else in prog has made 12. Uh, yes, had made 12, of course. Their 12th album was Big Generator. Um, Genesis's 12th album was that awful one with the stars on the front of it, just called Genesis. Um, and Rush made one um, that was that was quite a later one. Um, I think it was Snakes and Arrows. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, trying to think of which one of these were good and what what made their 12th record good and <clears throat> so when i went to some of the ones that were really good like um and one that i thought was really really good was uh, the pink floyd's uh, album which uh, <clears throat> which of course is the final cut and the reason why i think that the final cut is such a good record is that It didn't sound and it didn't have the same purpose as the others. You know, it was like, you know, they've tried something really new here. Mm. And yeah, there were bits of it that were like the wall, but it, it had this sort of political stuff to it. And, mm. So, you know, on approaching it, I just kind of thought, well, the band is capable of doing so many things. Why don't we just try to do as many of them as we possibly can? And Let's do a kind of Tales from Topographic Oceans, very long songs, three long from, songs, yes. um, rather than four, but uh, we'll do three really long songs, one short one, and um, we'll just try to make each one of them be a completely separate thing that that takes you down a different set of roads. And, you know, I think we did it. I think we got there. I think we did that. And... You know, in that respect, it's an album. I don't. I don't think there's many other records like this one. Um, you know, wh where else is there a record which has got three 20 minute long tracks, all of which are completely different, and then a Tamla Motown song at the end? There aren't any because it's commercial suicide. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, that, that's what we got into, um, and. Uh, It, it was very enjoyable to do because we got to we got to experiment with all sorts of things, lots of different ideas, and uh, stretch ourselves as musicians. Changes is the first track and the first epic on that <laughs> album. What is the story behind this track? Everybody knows the story because we were all in lockdown. Um, you know, because like. Um, I guess it's really about that 
those first so when the first lockdowns arrived and we were all s sat at home we were all all of us were thinking what's going to happen now you know is this ever going to end am i ever going to see these yes. people again am i ever going to play a gig again am i ever going to go and decorate a house again am i ever going to go and work in a shop again I, we all thought that and there was this sort of sense of loneliness came in on all of us and you know i somehow wanted to just just capture how i felt then and i thought that you know uh, I, I want to talk about, you know, that moment. Will I ever play again? And 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 rather than talk about the lights, the show, the, the rock and roll and everything like that, I wanted to talk about just those little moments when we're on tour and we're a bit tired and we're just laughing, having a joke in the van and got a problem, we've got to solve the problem, all that kind of stuff. Um, I wanted to sort of show that side that, of, of life that I was missing and whether I'd visit certain places again. You know, it's that kind of moment. We all had a sort of this this moment. Will I ever do this again? Like 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 somebody who's just been told that they've got some kind of terrible disease. You know, we mm. all had it all at once. Everybody in the world. It was a strange, strange thing, and um, you know. Uh, the world went very, very quiet, and you know, I just, I just, I just tried to reflect it the way I saw it because obviously, there's billions of other viewpoints on uh, on what happened. That was just my way of seeing it, and I didn't want to spend the whole album talking about it. Just, um, you know, uh, so managed to write it this one track. Yeah, I, I also read you don't see things like before now? Um, I don't see things like before. So, sorry, I, I missed what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> Be, after the pandemic situation, you you change your mind and you don't see things like before, no, isn't no, it? I, it's, it's, uh, what I'm hoping is that, uh, you know, we can sort of, and, and you know, obviously, this this is a thing about writing a song about current events. Is that they they very quickly become out of date. And yeah, so of course, yeah, we've got a song out about the COVID lockdowns now, but those are all gone, and they've been replaced by other problems that the world is going through. And I think that one of the things I was saying in the song was, you know, can't we use this to try and, you know focus on better things than we yes. have been focusing on and and so that's what i was saying but unfortunately since i finished writing the song since it was in the can and ready to be released uh, we've we've gone into wars we've gone into food shortages price rises and, and lots and lots and lots of other things which obviously means that my call to let's do something better with our lives has gone you know <laughs> We all dream that we could do something better than than fight wars and um, and uh, and fight amongst ourselves and argue and create hatred and stuff. But um, you know, it just seems to carry on. But we'll carry on, hope, hopefully, saying you know, um, let's 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 uh, give ourselves a chance to do something better. That's. Mm. Do you know what is my favorite song on that album? The body. No, we the body tied to the lamppost because it's very poetic deep emotional um is that girl on the hard shoulder yes i mean that's the, the hard shoulder is um it's the it's the it's the sort of like little metaphor i use for the record because you know on the hard shoulder is where you where you wait when you're breaking broken down on the road. Uh, that's what we call it here in England. I don't know about Canada, but uh, you know the breakdown lane, and you know you you can end up in the breakdown lane of life. And this lady who I'm singing about, in the lady that tied to a lamppost, she's somebody who's you know fallen through the net. She's lost everything. And she's basically homeless on the street, on the hard shoulder of life, watching the rest of us fly past in our fast cars and everything. 
And the changes, of course, is the same, except in that song, we're all on the hard shoulder and there's no traffic at all. <laughs> we're all just waiting to be rescued and we never were. So, you know, and uh, that's, um, that's, that's where the hard shoulder thing comes from. Yes. So, you know, the lady tied to the lamppost is a real person I met um, and uh, somebody who affected me quite a lot. You know, um, and uh, I, I just wanted to say something about her, and uh, and it's taken me quite a long time. That that song's been percolating around in my head for about seven years, um, but um, seven years. Yes, I, I think I met her seven years ago, um, and uh, yeah, it's a long time. It's a very beautiful piece of music. Thank you. Yeah, um, it was. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. Um, it, it. It it worked out very well, and it was. You see, that's another thing as well because you know, writing a sad song like that is, you know, it's it's a risk. Uh, you know, particularly because, you know, some people don't like sad songs. They want they want to feel up. Um, mm. But, you know, uh, as I say, we just commit commercial suicide all the time. So, yeah, we decided we'd do a really long, sad song. But, you know, they're, they're, there's hope in all our songs, I think. There's always hope. Yes. Anyway, um, I can say that Stephen Wilson writes sad songs too. Yes, he does indeed. Yeah, of course he does. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, he's... a uh, He's somebody who's always been there during my career, you know, um, uh, in progressive rock music. Um, I mean, I, I think I've been playing a lot longer than him because I'm older. But, uh, <laughs> like, uh, you know, I, since I started doing prog rock with PO90 round about the same time that Porcupine Tree arrived on the scene at the beginning of the 90s. So, yeah, um, And uh, yeah, so he's always been there and I've always listened to his stuff and I've always liked it. So uh, there you go. The songs from the Art Order is really brilliant, clever. Um, what is the feedback so far? Uh, feed <laughs> feedback's been embarrassingly good. <laughs> <laughs> good yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, we've just had um, a whole slew of really, really great reviews from um, websites all over the world, magazines all over the world. Um, you know, um, I've reached a point where, you know, I can't keep on putting them on our website and everything because, you know, it just, uh, you know, we've kind of got to do something else now, you know. Um, but it's been a really, really good reaction. And I think it's actually been the most positive reaction we've ever had in all our 20 years. Um, so um, I, I'm very pleased about it. Um, of course, I would be, you know, uh, because all, all we ever want to do is <laughs> is make music that makes people happy. And essentially, you know, um, a lot of people have come back and said that they've really enjoyed the record. So, hey, we win, you know, and uh, and nobody loses, you know, because, <laughs> uh, you know, there's nothing there's nothing about people enjoying our album that stops them enjoying a l another record as well. You know, we we can all enjoy lots and lots and lots of different music. And I'm just glad to be able to provide some that people enjoy. You know, that's all we ever dream of doing. There's a dog behind you. <laughs> ah, rhubarb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, rhubarb the dog. Yeah. yeah, she's very old. Congratulations for all that. Ah. Et maintenant, je sais que tu parles français. Oui, je parle français pour Et... les uh, pour les mecs canadiens. Oui, bon. Et pour les français aussi. Euh... N'importe que. Ouais. Alors, je vais terminer avec deux questions en français. Oui, Et absolument. Et c'est comme ça que je termine les interviews, c'est une tradition. Ah ouais, okay. Alors, je vais te poser, cher Andy, une question. Le groupe avec lequel tu aurais rêvé de jouer un jour Ah uh, oui. Uh, uh, yes, ça serait très bon. <laughs> uh, 
Oui, mais aussi avec euh, mon grand héros, Peter Hamill, je voudrais jouer avec lui. Euh, je ne pense pas qu'il euh, qu arrive, mais euh, arrivera, mais euh, on peut, on peut esp espérer. Et euh, l'autre, c'est Neil Morse. Euh, je suis un grand fan de lui. Euh, je, il est une chrétienne, naturellement, et je suis artiste. Euh, alors, je pense qu'il euh, il doit être quelque chose qu'un artiste, un chrétien peut dire ensemble que pour, pour, pourrait être utile. Okay. Très bien. Ouais. On va envoyer un message à Neil Morse et euh, voilà. <rire> euh, il, il le sait, il le sait. Euh, euh, oh. J'avais parlé avec lui quelques fois, et, euh, euh, mais... Euh, le moment n'est-ce pas euh, n'avait pas arri arrivé jusqu'à maintenant. Okay. Il viendra, c'est sûr. <rire> ok, j'espère. Et, en, et enfin la dernière question, la, la, la chanson que tu aurais aimé composer un jour, une chanson ou deux, allez, deux chansons que que je je souhaite j'avais que tu aurais aimé écrire et composer quoi. You would like to to have written one day. Ok. Um, uh, <laughs> une de mes chansons préférées, c'est uh, Ain't No Mountain High Enough uh, de Diana Ross. Uh, uh, Cela, c'est si magnifique. Uh, je souhaite que c'était la mienne. Ouais. Uh, <laughs> uh, parce que c'est absolument superbe. Um, et euh, oui, je, je crois aussi uh, Roundabout de Yes, parce que c'est. Il n'y a pas une autre chanson du monde comme ça, exactement comme ça. C'est euh, un son unique. C'est euh, euh, la guitare acoustique, mais il a beaucoup de rock. Oui, on, c'est oui, c'est très étrange cette chanson. Et, de... oui. Et, oui, et je, je souhaite elle était la mienne, mais euh... une, une chanson de 1972 de l'album Fragile. Oui, oui, absolument. Euh, un de mes un de mes premiers albums, le premier album que j'avais acheté était Close to the Edge. Euh, je crois le deuxième était Fragile. Le troisième était le Yes album, puis Time in the Word, <rire> et uh, Yes 1. Et, uh, ouais, et après ça, uh, naturellement, c'était Tales from Topographic Oceans. Et puis j'avais découvert Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Donc, alors, um, <rire> il y a long, c'est très longtemps. Beaucoup, beaucoup de eau a passé sous le pont uh, de, depuis ces temps-là. OK. <rire> En tout cas, Andy, je te remercie vraiment pour, euh, pour ta disponibilité, tes réponses. Je suis très, très content de t'avoir interviewé puisque pour moi, je le dis en, en français, tu représentes euh, ce qu'est aujourd'hui un artiste, un, un résistant et, et dans ta musique, tu es quelqu'un de très honnête, euh, créatif, sincère euh, et j'admire cela. Merci beaucoup pour ça. Oui, euh, euh, il, il, il faut être des humains, euh, être humains dans cette industrie. Alors, euh, j'espère que je suis un de ces. OK. Et, et c'est super parler avec vous, avec toi. Oui, euh, pardon si je tutoie. Euh. <laughs> anyway, see you soon, Andy. It was great to, to have this conversation with you. Bye bye and see you soon. See you soon, Sebastian. Bye bye. Auf Wiedersehen und uh, ich hoffe, alles yeah. geht gut für den Zukunft. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye bye. <laughs>